Everyone say, I will know God. So, because you will know God, now you determine, I'm going to know God, but you don't just say those words. There's a test. We have those tests, right? Okay. There's a test that you have to take, and it's a personal test. Everyone go in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 13.5. 2 Corinthians 13.5, because this is what we're doing. God's not giving, well, God is testing me. That's why I had that car accident, because God is testing me. Does God test us? No, No, we got to test ourselves, okay? I've got to decide for me if I really know him or I'm being fake. I'm being religious. So look what it says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Remember, your leaders are watching you. If you're paying attention, if you're going there in your Bible, I already see some that are, they don't want tickets on the boy's side. So you're just going to have to make a mental note and say, that person does not want a ticket. Examine yourselves. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to examine yourself. As to whether you are in the faith or actually in a relationship with God. Like, I have to look at my life and decide, am I actually in a relationship with God? And then it goes on to say, test yourselves, which if you were here Wednesday night, we took a test. And that test was, Do I really know God? Because if I know God, what do I do? What two things did we learn Wednesday night? If I know God, these two things I do. I number one, who knows? I honor, yes, that's number two. Number one, obey. Obey. I obey and honor. What was the difference between obey and honor? Your attitude. Ellis? Um, It's how you do it. How I do it. And And your attitude, right? So I know, I know God when I obey my parents. If I'm still having a hard time being obedient and honoring my parents, I have to be honest with myself and say, oh, I don't know God. Just like whenever you take a spelling test, have you ever taken a test and then it came back to you and it was like you got like 10 wrong? How many of you have ever got answers wrong on a test? It doesn't have to be that number 10, but you got the test back and you got some wrong. Anyone been there? Well, you can't go and argue with the book and say, no, I was right. I knew how to spell. I knew how to spell. No, bro. When you took the test, without looking at your little cheat sheet, your little study sheet, you didn't pass it. You can't, you can't pretend. Do you understand? You either know it or what? You don't. Now, a lot of people try to pretend. But what happens when you try to pretend, like if I were to pretend that a fake apple was a real apple and I sliced up the plastic and I covered it in peanut butter and just pretended like it was a yummy apple and then I ate it, what would that do to my insides? It would tear up my stomach. Like all that plastic, imagine having to poop out plastic. Ouch. That would hurt. Don't y'all agree? Yes. You've pooped out plastic? Oh my gosh. That would hurt so bad. Like it would literally cut up your intestines. Have y'all ever seen where dogs like they um, ate marbles or something and then they're, they st- kept throwing up like they couldn't eat anything. So then they had to go in and cut them open. I think there's been like um, dogs that have had like eaten like tennis balls. Like, you know, big dogs, they just like uh, tear apart everything. And like they had to cut them open and get it out because it was causing major damage. Being fake, being religious causes major damage. Not just to you, but what about that dog? Okay, that dog has some damage in his stomach, but what about its owners? What do they have to do now? They got to fork over the cash to pay for the dog to have surgery. And that could cost thousands of dollars for this dog. See, being religious, saying, oh yeah, I know God, I know God, I know God. But not actually knowing him, it does damage to you and it does damage to others. Say, I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to hurt people. Well, if you don't want to hurt people in your life, then you have to know God. And how do I get to know God? Two ways. Number one, me. Me. Read. And And then I allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me. So it says, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It says, examine yourself as to whether you are actually in relationship with God. It will either be relationship or religious. Religious just goes through the motion. Relationship, it comes from inside. And whenever I'm religious, what happens? I do damage to who? To me and to everyone else, everyone else around me. So I examine myself. I test myself. Don't I know 
myself. Jesus Christ is in me, and so guess what? If I'm not able to do it, I will be disqualified. So we're going to test ourselves on another area today. We tested ourselves on obedience and honor. Today we're testing ourselves on giving. I want you to go in your Bibles to Luke 6:38. We're going to look at these two verses that we should know. We don't want to just know, we want to what? Obey. We want to do. What does the Bible say? If you deceive yourself, if you just hear the word, but you don't do it. Oh, well, I'm good because I came to church. But are you? No. A lot of people come to church. Do you know who else showed up at church today? The devil. The devil. So now he's good? He's good because he came to church? No. No, you're good because you actually do the word. So look what it says. We're talking about testing myself. How do I give? It says give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Give and it will be given back to you. Give. Everyone say give. 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 This is the test. I test myself. Do I really know God? If I really know God, what do I do? I just said it, like I just read the little verse, like let's just all focus. I give. If I really know God, what do I do? I give. I'm a giving person. I'm a generous person. What about Malachi 3.10? What does it say? Who can get there? Yes, bring all your tithes to the storehouse that there may be me in my house. Prove me now herewith. Say it the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So two verses right there about our job. If you know God, what are you going to do? You're going to give. This is one of his commandments. His commands, his commands are to give. Give your offerings, give your tithe. Give encouraging words. Pastor Dean read a verse in Hebrews. You can go there really fast. Hebrews 13. Hebrews is in the new. Hebrews 13. Maybe it's 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 8. Okay. Hebrews 10. Look what it says. 10 verse 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. What is that saying? Like, I need to give encouragement to others. I need to be somebody that's a giver, that's a giver of life, not a giver of death. I'm commanded to give my tithes, my offerings. And then in this verse, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to give other people, like I'm supposed to stir them up in love. I'm supposed to encourage them in love. If I'm not doing the commands that God has placed, I cannot say I know him. I have a relationship with him. Because what did all of those people say? They came to to Jesus and they said, we cast out devils in your name. We did this. We preached. We did this. We did that. And what did he say? Depart from me. I never knew you. I didn't know you. I didn't know you. You may have known about me and you may have... um, flown and done some of the things like flowed in the gifts that I've given, but I didn't know you. There's a difference between knowing about God and knowing God. When I really know God, I obey his command. So I have to test myself. Am I a giver? Am I a giver of my tithes and my offerings? Am I a giver of encouragement? Am I a giver of like, maybe God tells me to give something. Am I just quick to give? When someone asks me, they, they, I come in the room and I've got cheese and nachos and I'm starving. I'm just so, so hungry. I haven't had breakfast. I haven't yes, eaten. Eat it, eat it, eat it. And someone says, someone says, hey, can I have a chip? Are you quick to say, yeah, you can have one and take the one on top with the most nacho cheese? Or are you selfish? Because if you're selfish, you don't know God. You better check yourself before you get left. You don't know God. Because the nature of God in you is to not just be sweet and kind, but to give. Look what it says in Genesis 1. Go there fast. See, here's the thing. Y'all be pretending. And just like I've said before, if Jesus comes back and y'all are still here, please get right and bring as many kids in here and tell them about Jesus that you can. 
Because we can't just pretend. Don't just think because you're, oh, well, I'm just in kids' church. I'm going to go to heaven right away. No, you're not. You're disrespectful. You don't pay attention. You do your own thing. Do not deceive yourself into thinking that you really know God. You've just showed up to church. And, y'all, it's not good. It doesn't end well. Being religious doesn't end well. It actually ends really bad. Remember what, we, what I just said? It doesn't just damage you. It damages people that you're called to minister to. People that you're called to lead. It damages them too. Because if the Bible says that if the blind lead the blind, what happens? They all fall into a ditch. So then you are deceived. You're blinded into thinking that you actually know him. And then people that are following you, and there are people that are following you. Club 45, people are following you. These little kids, even some of you older ones, people are following you. They're looking at how you act in church, how you respond to the word. And so if you're deceived and you still just do your own thing, that's selfish. That's not being a giver. And you were made in the image of God. Look what it says in Genesis. Let us, Genesis 1, I get it, you're there, you already said it. Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in what? Our image, after our likeness. Well, what is the image of God? John 3, 16. I hope you all know the Bible today because you're going there. John 3, 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave. He gave. God so loved that he gave. I was made in the image of God, so I should be quick to give. When I know him and know what all he has given me, then it will be easy for me to give. But when you don't really know God, you're trapped in fear. What is the opposite of love? Who can tell me? Fear. Fear, fear is the opposite of of love because perfect love cast out fear and God is love so God is love so God gives if I embrace fear then I'll always be selfish so let's look at this we're just going to put these verses up you'll just have to find a million because I didn't put them in the notes first John 4 7 you can get there first John 4 7 this is the thing I have to test myself and ask myself, am I a giver? Do I give my tithes, my offering? Do I give encouragement? Look what it says in 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. I should be giving love. Love gives. Everyone say love gives. Love gives. And when I know God, then guess what? I know love, and I give. Love gives. Say love gives. So if love gives, I've been made in the image of God. God is love. Go to 1 John 4, 18. If I know God, I know love. Love gives. 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love drives out fear. Cast it out. Because fear involves tor torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect. Like, you don't really know God. If I still have fear... Fear of not having enough. Like, whenever someone asks you for a chip, like a, a chip with cheese or whatever, you're hungry. Well, if you don't give to them, what does that mean? You have embraced what? It's okay. He's trying to help him so he gets a ticket. He'll still get a ticket. He's too little. Thank you so much. You're awesome, brother. If I don't give the chip, what have I embraced? Fear. Fear of what? I won't have enough. And y'all, you do that with your nachos. Guess what you'll start doing that with? Your time, your money. You'll start doing it with everything in your life. If you can't give a dang sour punch, straw, to someone that asks you, you better get on your knees before the Father. Say, God, I need to know you a little better. Because if I'm holding back a sour punch straw, then whenever you ask me to give somebody an, an encouraging word that maybe I don't really like, it's going to be really hard for me. Or if you tell me to give my tithes and my offerings, and my offering, you tell me to give everything I got, 
going to be too hard for me, and then I won't walk in the blessing. See, when you know God, you know love. And love casts out fear. So you're, you're just so generous. You literally, the Bible even says, you'll give somebody the tunic or the shirt off your own back. That's how generous you are. Because guess what? If I'm made in the image of God, then I should be a giver. We should not be selfish. Selfishness is of the devil. Being selfish with your time. Being selfish with encouragement. Like if you know, like maybe you, you see somebody and they got a new pair of shoes and they're really nice. Instead of you just saying like, hey, I like your shoes. You just are like, oh, well, they had new shoes and they always get new shoes. Just like ugly. Just like rude. Someone looks really pretty. They did their makeup like Sadie. She looks so pretty with her little things on her little eyes. Instead of just saying, hey, you look pretty. Boys, calm down. Not you. But like girls, instead of like encouraging your friends, like you're not. You're rude. You cut them down. You criticize. You don't know God. Because if you know God, then you love. And whenever you love, what are you doing? You're giving. You're giving. When you know God, your thoughts are about him and what he wants you to do, what he wants you to say, where he wants you to go. Not about you. It is so selfish. Like, and guys, we live in a society, like um, Joe Morris always says, like, this is the day where men will be lovers of self. Yeah. They won't give. They won't give encouragement. If they do give something, it's poisonous. It's hate. And that's just because they don't know God. Who do they know? The they know the devil. If I'm pumping hate out of my mouth, if I'm being catty, if I'm being rude, what am I saying? I, I don't know God, but I know the devil. Yeah. And guess where the devil ends up? In hell. in hell. At the end of it all, he ends up in hell. And so I have to, the Bible says, men will be lovers of self. We have a selfie stick, a stick to hold your phone, to take a picture of yourself. Selfishness is ugly. We have social media. Then what does it do? It magnifies you. Oh, no, I post things about Jesus all the time. Bulloni, you post things about Jesus. It's about what you're eating, what you're wearing, what you look like, what you are feeling. You're, right? Snapchat, TikTok, all that trash that came from some demonic nation. And we just embrace it like it's okay. Well, what is that? I don't know God. Because when I know God, I've got better things to do with my time. Like give my tithes and my offerings while I don't have a job. Well, then just like Caden and whoever else, like they're slanging drawings, 50 cents a drawing. Well, what's that going to do? That's going to go in their piggy bank. What's tithe off of 50 cents? Five cents. Now I got tithe. Now I got offering, right? Because I put my, I've got better things to do, like give people the love of the Father than to just give people me. Because me won't save anybody. Do you understand? The way I looked on Super Bowl Sunday, hashtag Eagles, right? That's not going to save anybody. Me doing some stupid dance, that's not going to save anybody. But me saying, hey, I'm going to give my tithe. I'm going to give my offering. I'm going to give an encouraging word. I'm going to provoke people to love the Father. That's actually going to make a difference in this life. So you have to test yourself. Do I really know God? Because if I know God, I give. And then the Bible goes on to say, how? And I love this about the Father. Just like you obey, but how? With what? Starts with an H and ends with an honor. You honor, right? I know that I'm, I, I know God when I obey and I honor. I know that I know God when I give, but how? He tells me how. Go in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Guys, we just got to ask ourselves. And listen, if we don't know him, then it's so easy. How do I get to know him? Me, read. I, I get to know him in the word. And then I allow the Holy Spirit to show me who he is. It's so easy. But whenever you're selfish, everything is so complicated. Everything is so drama. You know why? Because it's flesh and it's ugly and it's all about you. And y'all, we're a mess without Jesus. We're a mess without his love. And so we can't make it about ourselves. We have to make it about him. So look what it says. So we give. How do I know I know God? Number one, I obey and I honor. Number two, I give, but how? Look what it says. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. Oh, sorry for keeping you awake. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver, right? How do I know I know God? Number one, 
I obey and honor. Number two. No, not that number two. The other number two. Have y'all seen Little Rascals? <laughs> okay, number two. I give, but how? Look what it says at the very bottom of that verse. I, God loves a what? Cheerful. Cheerful giver. So I don't just like give. Like someone asks for a nacho and I'm like, fine, take the nacho. Right? No, I give cheerfully. Like, I have nachos today, and I'm looking for someone to give them to. Hey, do you want to try a nacho? Hey, you want to try? This cheese is, like, all over my finger. Hey, you want a hot Cheeto? You want to have a hot Cheeto? Why? Because I'm a giver. I don't allow fear. I'm not selfish. There's more nachos where that came from. Well, when I saved up all of my money to buy these nachos, okay, well, you give that one nacho. Guess what? Next week, someone might come through those doors and say, hey, God put it on my heart to buy you these nachos. And you didn't even have to pay for them. You'd have to save up all your allowance or whatever. Do people do allowance anymore? Dang, can't nobody get a little some some? That's fine. Oh, used to, but not anymore. Why? Because you used to do your chores and then you start. We weren't faithful. Yeah, okay. But we give. And we're how? We're cheerful. We don't throw a fit. Like, you always ask for a hot Cheeto. You always... You're not going to get a reward for that. Like, just give the kid a dang hot Cheeto. Well, you always ask for a pencil at school. I just can't stand it. Well, then why don't you start bringing extra pencils? Because you know so-and-so is going to ask, and you want to be ready to give. I'm so glad that Jesus isn't up there like, ah, uh, you're always asking me to forgive you, and I just don't want to forgive you. You can just go to hell. I'm so glad Jesus isn't up there thinking that. He's quick to do what? He's quick to forgive. He's quick to give forgiveness. Even though he gave you power over sin and you made the same dumb choice, he said, I'll forgive you anyways, whenever you humble yourself and confess it. So I'm not going to be selfish. Do you understand? I know God. So because I know God, number one, I obey and I honor. honor. And then number two, I give and I give how? Cheerfully. Cheerfully. With a smile on my face and not just like a fake smile, but like a smile in my heart. Like, I'm excited to give. I'm excited to do exactly what God does. And God gives. I'm excited today to give and do exactly what God does. Give encouragement. Like when my, when my sister and my brother come in and they're ticked off. I'm not going to, like, make them more mad. I'm going to give them encouragement. Whenever my friends are having a bad day, I'm not going to make them more mad. I'm going to give them love and encouragement. Do you, like, Either that or you just don't know him. But when you get to know him, it's going to be an automatic flow. Just like this, this cucumber. This is a cucumber. But the moment, the moment I put it in like vinegar, like mostly vinegar, but vinegar and water, it's going to change. Do you understand? Do you know that whenever you take your life and you put it with fear, it changes you. It makes you different. You're not a cucumber anymore. Now you're something totally, you, you're not even classified as that. When you as a believer embrace fear and you become selfish, you're not a giver, you're not cheerful, you're che you're, you've changed and now you're different. And that's not the nature of God in you. You can't embrace fear and still walk in the flow of the spirit. It's not going to happen. So you have to eliminate fear because what happened? This cucumber, y'all honestly, I just did this illustration because I wanted a pickle. This cucumber turned into what? Oh my God. A juicy pickle too. Turned into a pickle. It's a totally different name. You don't go to the cafe and say, hey, can I order a cucumber that's been soaked in vinegar and a little bit of maple syrup and a little bit of water and some dill? Do y'all say that? No, what do you go to the, the cafe and say? Can I get a pickle? I would like a pickle. See, whenever you embrace fear, it changes you. It cha and you're not identified the same. And if I'm not identified the same, then guess what? The enemy's not intimidated by me. I need to be identified as someone that loves, that someone obeys, someone that gives. Because if I'm identified as selfish, then the devil is not intimidated by me. And I want the devil, like, scared crapless every single day I wake up. I want him pooping in his britches, like Radeline did the other night. Pooping in his chonies. When the enemy sees me, what does he do? He craps his pants. Dang it, faith is up again. Dang it, Ellis is at school, and now he's going to give, and he's going to be encouraging. Dang it. 
Titan just walked in and his parents are right there. And now he's going to obey. Dang it. But if I don't know God, yeah. then guess what? The enemy's not intimidated by me. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It, I'm just like another one of his victims yeah. that he can steal, kill, and destroy from. But when I know God and I identify as someone that loves, that gives, that obeys, yeah. then the enemy, literally, crap and bricks, yeah. bro. Like, just like us, if we were to eat plastic and poop it out hurts, like, I hurt you every day. I hurt your plan every day in my city. I hurt your plan in my school. I hurt your plan in my family. Why? Because I know God. Yeah. Because I know God, I flow from that place. But you have to choose that. Just like I chose this pickle and it's delicious. 